Hi, I'm Emma from Wizard Bikes, and today I'm going to go through my steps of bending a pair of mountain bike handlebars out of steel. Any of the uh, tools or materials or math that I talk about in this, I'll put in the description below. All right, I've got some bars to bend up today, and I've got my customer's geometry that they want. And on here, I've got uh, kind of a like, running tally of all the bars I've bent and uh, the positions and bend degrees that I use to get different numbers. So it's kind of like a running cheat sheet. Uh, so this customer wants 12 degrees of back sweep, 80 mils of rise. Uh, so I'll just look through this, find a bar with 80, and then just use these base numbers to do the layout for these bars. Uh, we'll start by marking the center of my tubing. Uh, the tubing I'm using for these bars is 7 8 by 0 5 8, uh, 4130, which is 22.2 .2 millimeters OD, which will clamp in any BMX stem, or you can use pretty commonly available shims to. 31.8 or even 35 mil. Um, so when once I have center marked, um, I mark out the stem clamping area, and I generally do 25 mils on each side from center. And then for an 80 mil rise bar, since that's fairly uh, tall, um, from the stem clamping area, I'm going to mark uh, 120 millimeters for the second bend. And when I'm using, when I'm marking the bend areas, I use a, a skinny sharpie rather than a fat just because it gives you less like wiggle room when you're lining everything up in your two bender. Bending setup that I use for handlebars is a JD squared model 32 with a 7 8 uh, bending die for a 3.5 inch center line radius. 3.5 inch seems to be the tightest that I can bend this thickness of 4130 without getting big dimples in the bend or any rippling or anything like that. Um, I'd originally used a six and a half inch center line die, but you had to spread the uh, first and second bend out too far and it was super hard to make anything like lower than 60 mils of rise. So the tighter bend just lets everything get more compact. You can make lower rise bars with bars with way more back sweep. Uh, we've got the tube in with it lined up with the end of the bending die lined up with the first bend, which is the closest to the center. And for this, I'm going to do a, a 25 degree bend. Then with that first bend done, take the bar out, flip it over, and then line up the second bend, which is the other bend that's closest to the center of the bar. And then on the already bent side, and my digital angle finder, I'll get this level so that both of the first bends are in phase with each other. And then lock it in place once it's level.
when I'm leveling it, I put a bit of tension on the bending bar just so that the bar doesn't wiggle around in the die. And once, that, once that's level and tight, the second bend also goes to 25 degrees. got the first two bends which are the bends that give the bar the rise and then we're going to start on the second bends which give the back sweep and flatten the bar out for you and then starting with either side line up the end of the bending guy with the mark that's 120 mils out And then with this one, you use the flat section where the stem clamp is to set the back sweep. Since this customer wanted a 12 degree back sweep on their bars, I'm going to wiggle this around until it hits 12 degrees, clamp it down, And then bend to 25 degrees as well. And I should say for the first bend, we want the tip of the handlebar pointing up and towards your lever. And then when we flip it over and do the second, we want the tip of the bar down and towards the lever. That's the best way that I have to remember the, which direction you want the bar to be facing on each bend. Because otherwise, if you end up getting the second bends uh, opposing to each other, rather than a bar with back sweep on both sides, you'll end up with like an S-shaped bar. So now the bar's flipped over, line it up to the end of the bending die. And like I said, we want the bar tip down and towards the handle. And then using the stem section again, we can set the 12 degrees of back sweep. Lock it in. And bend to 25 degrees. we pull it out we've got a handlebar and we'll go over to the workbench make sure that all the bends are where they should be the bar came out the angles and rise that we want and then add the crossbar so before I braise the crossbar onto the bars I want to do a quick check to make sure that everything is square and as it should be uh, so when I first the first thing I do is lay the bars down on the grip clamping area and make sure that there's no major wobble uh, between the bar ends. If you bend one side too much, there'll be a pickup and then the bar will wobble between the two bends. So this bar is nice and flat. And then the next one is same kind of check on the upright section of the bars. And this one's nice and flat there too. 
So after that, I'll check the back sweep numbers. So we're looking at 12.7 on this side and 11.8 on this side. So we're off by about a degree. Um, so what I'll do is when I'm brazing the crossbar on, I'll just put a bit of heat on the back side of this bend so that it closes up a tiny little bit. Um, and then last thing to check is the rise. So this customer wanted 80 mils of rise and we're looking at 70, 77 or so mils. So I'd say we're right in the money. Now this is a bar I bent up earlier and this has a good example of when the the bends aren't quite even right off of the, the tube bender. So this side uh, rattles on this side because this side is picked up a bit more. So what I'll do is I'll put this one back in the bender and give this side just the lightest tweak so that they balance themselves out. For the crossbars on my bars, I use a fairly skinny tube. I use 3 8 tubing, but I use by 5 8 wall, so a super thick wall. So it's nice, still nice and strong, holds the bar from collapsing. Uh, and what I do is I just hold the, the crossbar up approximately where I want it, and then just eyeball some initial uh, hacksaw cuts. And generally, I'll use the bend markings for the second bend as where I want the crossbar to be set, just since those markings are already there and we know they're uh, even. Once the initial cuts are done, you can take the crossbar over to the bar, lay it on, check where you have gaps, and then start getting work to doing the finish miters on these. Once you've got your crossbar mitered, you can put it on your workbench. And I use just a scrap piece of steel to push the crossbar up against the handlebar. And then to make sure your crossbar is level with the clamping section, you can just check the height of the crossbar on both sides to make sure it's sitting nice and level. Uh, and then you're ready to braze or weld. Uh, since I'm gonna be brazing, I'm gonna slap some gas flux type B Brazing flux on there, and then I've got a uh, 1 uh, nickel bronze brazing rod, and then I've got a number one tip on my torch for this.
Now that these bars are cooled, I've uh, soaked off all of the flux in some hot water and the bars are ready. Uh, you can double check all of your geometry on something flat to make sure that they held the shape that you wanted to do, make any uh, changes that you need. But other than that, they're ready to ship off to paint or powder for you to rattle can it. Um, normally I would add my logo, uh, my brand and my logo with, in stainless steel that I silver braze on, uh, but I'll leave those steps for an upcoming silver brazing video. Uh, if there's any other how-to videos you want to see, let me know in the comments below and I'll try and film them coming up.